If you've ever used the Steam Workshop for Resonations, you might have noticed that none of the items, none of the mods, have thumbnails. And as far as I can tell, that's because the feature was never implemented by the developers. However, importantly, as far as I can tell, the Workshop does actually fully support it, which means that if we use different methods of uploading the thumbnail, we can actually add thumbnails to our mods. So I'm going to show you how I figured out how to do that. But before we do that, i got to point out a few things, very important things. One, this guide is also available in article form. This video will not be updated if this method breaks. The article will get updated. So if something doesn't work for you in a year or two years or five years or whatever, check the article, the link is in the video description. Second, this video is not intended to be a guide on how to upload a mod itself. This guide is only intended to be used to figure out how to upload a thumbnail for a mod which already exists. Third, and perhaps most importantly, this method works for me right now. If you're viewing this in a few years or however long, it might not work anymore. And if that's the case, then again, check the article. That's where I'll update things if they need updating. Okay, so first we gotta actually have a mod on the workshop. You might be able to do this without having an existing mod, but for our purposes we're just gonna make sure we have a mod already up there. So I'm just gonna fire up Ron and it's gonna, it's gonna take its sweet ass time actually loading. And I'm just gonna quickly publish a mod. And then we'll get right into it. Okay. Just gonna, just gonna publish this mod. Bring out our thumbnails to Resonations mods in the Steam Workshop. Yep. So we're gonna upload that. It'll take a little bit. And publishing successful. So that mod is now up. Um, and you can. No, oh, maybe, maybe not. No, I'm just gonna reload those assets real quick. Just to verify that's actually there. And then we'll check it on the Steam Workshop and make sure it's also there. Okay, there we go, it just needed to be reloaded. Um, so there you have it. Um, the thumbnails mod is now live. So if we quit out of Ron and then hop over to most recently published ones, it's not there. <laughs> so we're gonna go to files that we've posted, and there we go, thumbnails. See that uh, it's up now, and that's the description we gave it. Uh, and so now we're going to go ahead and go through the process of adding a thumbnail to it. So in addition to needing an existing mod, which we now have, um, what you'll need is Steam CMD. This is a utility from Valve. It's basically just running Steam via the command line. You're going to need to go to this link, which I'll put in the video description. Um, and from here, you'll need to download uh, the file from here. Once you have that, you'll need to unzip it to its own folder. I've already gone ahead and done that. When you first unzip it, the only thing that will be in there is this. And then afterwards, all of this other stuff will, will get in there. So you're going to need to open up a uh, command prompt. I'm, I'm running the command prompt as uh, admin, but I don't actually know for sure if you need to do that unless you're accessing a privileged folder. Since I haven't tested it either way, I'm just going to keep running it as admin. And from here, we need to navigate to this directory. So we're going to do that right now. Steam CMD. Uh, it's possible you don't need to do this, but again, I haven't tested it, so I'm just going to tell you exactly what I did to get it working. And then if someone has a, like a, a faster method, then great. We'll, we'll know in the comments of the article or the video or whatever. From here, run steam cmd.exe. If this is the first time ever running it, it's going to have to download all of these files and it'll show the progress of those downloads uh, over here. And then once that's done, you'll get verifying installation, blah, 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 and it'll hopefully say OK. And you'll get 
instead of this prompt for Windows, you're now running Steam in this command prompt window. Um, so once you have that, what you need to do is log in and the formatting for that is shown here if you just type login and then don't give it any more information. So what you need to do is type in login and then your username here, replace that with your username, put your password next to it and then if you have uh, two-factor authentication and you use a Steam Guide code then you're going to need to put that here as well. For example your code might be PR8UH or something like that, right? Um, and then you log in using those credentials. And obviously because it's all in plain text, I'm not going to do that on screen. I'm going to do that off screen and then I can edit it using editing magic. Once you've logged in, it should say logged in OK, waiting for user info, and it might wait a little bit there while it's getting your user info for the first time especially, and then it should say OK. Once you've got that, you can use the information on this page. Uh, this is also an official Valve site, so like, you know, don't worry too much about it. Um, basically, we want to log in, which we've already done, and then we want to, once we've logged in, we want to upload a VDF file to the Steam Workshop. Um, so how we're going to do that is in the Steam CMD folder, we're going to make a blank text file. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. We're going to call us example. Sure, we're just going to call it example. Um, and we're going to open it up in Notepad. And what you want to do is copy this into here. The app ID for the game is displayed on both the Steam Store and the Steam Workshop. So you can actually see that it's just this over here, 287450. So we're going to want to copy that in and replace the uh, example ID. Hi lads, it's future me. Uh, the correct number is 287450. It's not 278, which is what I typed initially. So just don't copy what you see there. The published file ID, that's the mod that you just published. So in our case, it's this. Just going to punch that in, 207896757. 503 and I'm not copying it because when I copy it it shows my URL bar and then you all stalk me for whatever I've typed in recently and we don't want that. So these these two fields are mandatory but as long as you you have an existing mod you don't actually need these other fields. You can use them if you want to but you, you don't need to. So what I just deleted was the file path to your mod on your local drive. So wherever, wherever the file path for your mod is, that's where you would put that. The documentation actually suggests that you use double backslashes instead of single backslashes. So a single backslash would just be like D, uh, Steam, CMD. Like that's single backslash. The documentation says do this. I've actually tested this and for me, in my specific instance, it worked just fine. So I don't know if that's just been changed and it's the, the documentation hasn't been updated, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. But in any case, you might need to try one and if it doesn't work, try the other. Uh, I'm going to do singles just because that's what worked for me before. So preview file is the thumbnail. This is the file that we want to add as the thumbnail. Uh, I've already prepped one before, so mine is example thumbnail 2png and we just need to put the file path in there, uh, .png. As far as I know, this thumbnail can be a PNG or a JPEG or a GIF, even an animated GIF if you want. I don't know exactly what the size limit or resolution limit is, but keep in mind it's a thumbnail, it's, it's not going to be displayed at very high resolution, so there's not much point making it too big. And you also want it to like load super fast, so you don't want it to be like the, the size of the file either to be too big. So both file size and resolution just you know keep them reasonable. Visibility is again an optional field. Um, this will tell the Steam Workshop whether to make it visible to the public, which is zero. One is friends only, and two is uh, hidden. And that's like private, I think. Uh, 
so we're gonna make ours public title is this um, in our case again this is an optional field this is an optional field if you don't have these fields it's just not going to replace the information you already have for your mod it's not going to remove the information that you already have it's just not going to replace it so we don't need the description either the description is just this part down here uh, again for us we don't need that and the change note is uh, this it's if you put something here like uh, first first uh, publish then it's this this part here so we're gonna say added thumbnail but if you want you can just remove that line just make sure you keep those brackets make sure you keep this line this line and the thumbnail line and remember to keep these quotes around everything as well but we're going to keep change note for this example so we're going to save that and close the file back over to here and you're going to need to have file extensions enabled if you don't have them enabled already and have no idea how to do that just search it up on your preferred search engine provider um, and then you can change it to a .vdf file it's going to come up with a prompt asking you if you're sure just say yes uh, and now we have our vdf file ready to go so hop back over to here make sure you don't show your login credentials to the entire universe and what you're going to need to do is kind of this um, and again the documentation uses pluses uh, if you do the steps separately I don't believe you need these pluses but again I haven't tested everything fully so I don't know 100% how it works uh, in terms of what works and what doesn't for this example I'm just gonna um, not use that I'm gonna paste that in there and then we will change the file to example.vdf and in your case you'll need to change it to whatever you've named your vdf file all right so I actually had the Resonations game app ID incorrect. Uh, it is it is still this, I just copied it wrong. Preparing update, uploading preview image. I'll just take a few moments to finish doing that. And success! So now if we go to the Steam Workshop, hopefully there will be a thumbnail here. Excellent! Uh, and you can see that since I deleted the description field and the uh, battle field, those haven't been changed. They're exactly what I had before. Go to the change notes. Yeah, the second change isn't up there yet. I don't actually know why. But it's possible it's just because I didn't update anything else about it. The first time I did this, I actually included those other fields. So I'm guessing, based on that, that you only get new change notes if you make a content update. Like, we've just updated the metadata, i.e. the thumbnail. So yeah, there you go, there's a thumbnail. Uh, and now if you go to the most recent ones, hopefully we're going to be there now. And there you go. Behold, working thumbnails. One final note is that when you want to close this window, you do a quit in the command line. Don't just X out the window, that doesn't close it properly. You need to do a quit, that'll get you out of Steam CMD, then you're back to the command line and you can close it however you'd like. So hopefully that helps you out. Before I wrap up, I just want to give a big shout out to Rockset over on the Keen Software House forums. They provided basically all the steps required to figure this out. Um, and they did it for a completely different game, and I just basically adapted the steps to resonations. But uh, there you go. Thumbnails can work, you just need to know how.